The point is that simply being aware of my breath helped, as the wing makers put it, to center me in stillness. This, by the way, doesn't mean that you're in a quiet room. You can be in a meeting at work and center yourself in stillness through your breath. But by being in this internal centeredness, I was in a better position to feel my own sense of expression, and that's what was missing in my initial efforts to integrate this process. I didn't have a good starting point for my practice of the heart virtues, and I was directing them outward to other people or events, and not myself first. Once I made that adjustment, it helped me to identify my essence and distinguish it from my mind system. Life essence is authentic in oneness and equality, and exclusively moves in nowness. The consciousness framework pivots between the past, present and future and operates in separation. If you express the heart virtues from the consciousness framework, especially outwardly, they won't have the same potency or effect. You've mentioned the idea of resistive and insertive behaviors, and I think I understand the insertive behaviors, in terms of expressing the heart virtues to oneself and others, but talk a little bit about the resistive behaviors. What are they, and how does that work? Again, you need to start from the point of distinguishing your life essence, in the now. Center yourself in nowness, through being still, and breath aware. Initially this may take some time, but it happens quicker with practice. Thought patterns that connect you to separation need to be stopped. Behaviors, too. You can simply say, I've identified a behavior that supports separation in this world. Let's say I have believed that Muslims are less moral than atheists, and therefore less likely to get into heaven, than someone who doesn't even believe in God. This is a belief or thought form that relates to separation. I can say, stop that, but it's not really effective for most people. I can resist the belief every time it expresses itself in my life, but many of these beliefs are so subtle and subconscious, that we don't even realize how they express themselves in our behaviors and choices. If you apply the hard virtues to yourself, like forgive yourself for having these perceptions, have some compassion for yourself that everyone is infected with these separation beliefs, from their subconscious and unconscious mind layers, be humble that making this resistive alteration is not just about you, but in a way, it's about everyone, because we are one. Appreciate the fact that you are working on this for the good of all. Have valor that you can stand up and resist these separation complexes, that lurk in your programmed consciousness framework. You can see how I used the heart virtues, to effectively deal with a belief or perception that separated me, not just from Muslims, though they were the target in this particular example, but when you draw separation lines around anyone, you're operating from the consciousness system implant, and it only supports the hologram of deception. Okay, but you're not suggesting that I look at rapists and murderers as one with me, are you? Well that's just it. They are. You can't have oneness and equality and then say, well, that's true, except for this population of society, or these felons of the human race. There is no leper colony, where humans are excluded outside of the circle. The circle is all-inclusive, or it is an illusion. This is an absolute. Remember my statement, about the hologram of deception is a prison? Yes. There is no other prison inside the prison. We're all in the prison. All of us are prisoners, even those who are in the incunabula. There is no one who stands inside the prison walls, and truly knows oneness and equality. But then how does it change, if no one knows this? It's a process, both for the individual and the human race. We work on it, together. We resist behaviors of separation, and insert behaviors of oneness and equality. We disengage from the thoughts, ideas, beliefs, principles, people, organizations, currencies, food, clothing, fashion, toys, and everything else within the hierarchy whose roots are nourished by separation. When you put it that way, it sounds daunting, even impossible. It has to be done, and it has to be done by us. The question is, if it has to be done, when does humanity want to do it? Now? A hundred years? A thousand years? Ten thousand years? The wing makers are clear about this in their writings, that if we wait until after human 3.0, when man and machine become integrated, it will only become more difficult. Enslavement of life must end, at all levels. I want to shift to something that's been bothering me about this whole conversation, and that is the issue of a god. From your description, god, as we've come to think of him, or her, or it, is an illusion. It's really a being who presents himself as god. So the question is, 
Is there a real God? Thanks for asking that question. I meant to bring it up on my own, and I think I sidetracked myself. Let's go back to the thought experiment about the bubbles. There is a presentation of a God, which as I've said, is Anu. This is the God that Muslim, Jew and Christian alike, revere and worship. This is the God who desires to return, and provide a clear supremacy over humankind, to direct humanity to a human 3.0, one world transhumanist existence, that would stretch into forever. As I have said, there is a life essence inside all beings, including the Anunnaki, and this life essence is infinite. If you understand infinite, then you understand it is outside of space-time. If a being is outside of space-time, it is not defined by polarities, like birth and death, creation and destruction, good and evil, and so forth. It is beholden to none of our vocabulary and concepts. Thus, when the wing makers decided it was time for this information to become available on Earth, it was offered, in terms of its text, as a bridge. In other words, it was decelerated to our language constructs. And other forms of media, too, like the music and art. Yes, but in a different application. All of this information needed to be encoded in a way that would be acceptable to two sources of scrutiny. One was Anu and his hierarchy, the other, the individual. Which is why the material in this interview will only be released when certain conditions are met, and the wingmakers are reasonably satisfied that the information will not be taken down by the hierarchy or dismissed as a fairy tale by the individuals they are trying to reach. Now, when this deceleration occurred, they elected to release the information in phases. Phase 1 would be encoded in a way that would allow people to understand the world outside of the hologram of deception, but in a framework that's somewhat familiar, that's resonant with the evolving beliefs on the planet. Hence, the idea of first source, source intelligence, sovereign integral, human instrument. All of these concepts will be provided without contextual details, because if they were included, the information that I'm telling you tonight would be purged by the hierarchy. The entire event string would be taken down. The inception point of the portal and grand portal would have been mired in doubt. So, it will be dispensed in the manner it must. This is not in my control. Source intelligence is the energy intelligence of first source, that serves to accelerate the expansion of consciousness and supports those who desire to unlimit themselves. What does this have to do with the existence of a God or not? I just wanted to clarify that the word God means multiple things and it needs to be clear what meaning is being used. That's why, in part, the wing makers don't use the word God but instead use the word first source. However, in their later philosophical writings, after Chamber 6, they don't use this word, for the reasons I mentioned. But these are very subtle intonations in their writings, as they try to weave their messages into our modern day culture without being targeted by hierarchical censors. There are literally people who censor this information? There are people who censor and control information everywhere, in the media, the government, the military, the sciences, education, religion, everywhere. The hierarchy has a complete army of censors. The vast majority don't know who they really work for, they're just enforcing what they've been hired to enforce. It's just a job. But technology platforms exist primarily for censorship. Intelligence gathering enables NSA censorship and information control. It's their job to filter, control and manipulate information. The system of mass surveillance isn't deployed to protect the masses. It's to control them, to keep them inside the prison, from a news perspective, and controllable, from the elite perspective. You're not seeing that the NSA cares about things like this, are you? Not in the sense of how God is defined but it's through their surveillance platforms that those in the hierarchy are alerted to information that details critical aspects of their hologram of deception. That kind of information is fed upstream to those who do care. If that's the case, then whenever this gets released, it'll get censored. So what's the point? This is all about timing. If this gets released it will be because the wing makers have confidence that it will pass censorship. Something will have happened to enable it. I'm aware you haven't really answered my question yet on God. So I do want to come back to that, but with the internet these days, couldn't you just drop this whole information on the public at one time? It'd go out to a few thousand people and then they could put it out on other sites and it would just grow in geometrical progression. How could they hold it back or censor it? It would be modified. It's a complete set of information. Once it got out in that format, 
Some would claim their version is the original and others would claim that their version was the original, and they might be as different as black and white in some areas. It only creates confusion, and once there's confusion, it's impossible to bring clarity. In intelligent circles this is called reputation destruction. Think of it like this. You have a set of information that is targeted to specific beings that live everywhere on the planet. You wait until there is a communication system that can get to each of these beings. You have to make sure that the information is as pure as it can be, but still get past the sensors, so you encode it and release it in phases. The first phase is released as a real event, to test the waters of reaction. The second phase is released with new content and modifications, emphasizing that it's a mythology. This is to reassure the sensors. The third phase will get more involved in practices and behaviors, but without full context. The fourth phase will probably be the human portal. The fifth phase will probably be this interview. And the phases that follow will depend on how this interview is received. So every release is being observed by both the hierarchy and the wing makers. Okay, let's go back to the God discussion. Yes, so, to answer your question, is there a God? There are many gods. Some beings present themselves as gods, and some beings manipulate others to such a degree that they become regarded as gods. And then there are collective intelligences that move between the quantum membranes, and simulate god-like qualities of omniscience and omnipotence, but they are not gods in the sense of being the creator. There are even some beings that present themselves as god through a human channel. The view of the wing makers, is that the oldest civilizations in the universe, believe there is a creator, but that this creator, known in the wing makers philosophy as first source, is so fundamental, that it is the fractal essence of all life in all variations, it is the quantum zygote of life at the most foundational level. It is not truly knowable as we think of knowledge. It is experiential through sound that evokes this tone of equality spoken of in the wing makers philosophy. It's not apprehended through the mind, which makes it hard to describe or convey. This is the problem with anything so elemental that it all but disappears. How do you convey it in such a way that it can hold a human being's attention? So there's a god, but it's unapproachable, is that basically it? Yes, but I want to mention that the relationship is to a creator, not a god. The creator is in all life. God is more of a parent, and in religious circles, a father figure who is humanized to such a degree that we can pray to God to give us things, help us remove obstacles, crush our enemies and so on. Creator is aligned to oneness and equality, while God is aligned to separation and fear. First source is the creator of life, the manifest reality of all existence. The creator lives within life as the infinite spark that connects all life as equals in oneness. It is not here to be humanized. It cannot be humanized, or for that matter, reduced to any other life form or thing. The creator is the conjoining of all existence in the equality of oneness, and when that occurs, then God exists. When it does not, there is no God in existence, only a creator. It is really that simple. As it is said in various religious texts that God created man in his image or likeness. And provided you understand Anu as God, then this is a reasonably true statement. However, the creator created the infinite spark that animates the human form, and so the sovereign integral is the creation, and Anu had nothing to do with this. He merely figured out a way to enslave it. The last thing I'll say about the concept of God, is that it's used by religions to separate ourselves from responsibility. It allows us to say, I'm not responsible for poverty, or war, or child abuse. There is a God who is much higher than us. God created the world, he is in charge. If he allows war and poverty, who am I to bear responsibility? The wrongdoers will pay in hell, and the tormented will reign in heaven. So God, or the concept of God, releases us from responsibility. The Creator, on the other hand, is not this way, because we're all bound in oneness, and what happens to one happens to all, and therefore, we're all responsible for allowing separation to rule our behaviors. It's important to recognize the difference between the constructs of Creator and God, especially within the hologram of deception. After hearing all of this explanation, not just about God, Creator, but the whole interview tonight, why couldn't it have just been released as it is defined in this interview? Why even release the first phases if they lacked this context? I've tried to answer this already, let me put it this way, but understand that this is speculation, so take it as such. 
There's no assurance that this will get released or stay released. That's one reason. There may be other individuals that need the earlier phase information, because it bridges their current beliefs better than the later phase information.